Welcome, how you doing out there? Great to see you. Now, if you're tuning into this, you saw the title. By the way, I'm not a fan of the word clinic because you go to a clinic when there's something wrong with you, there's nothing wrong with you. We are gonna bring up more of you on this amazing instrument, the drums today. So I like to think of this as an event. And the best thing is that you took action to be here. So this is amazing. You don't wanna regret wanting to do this. You've got this voice inside you that calls you to the drums. And then you meet your future self and you never took action. And you always wondered like, what if I did that? What would have happened? What would have, what would have, what would my life would have been like? You want to take action on this. And what was told to me a long time ago is you don't choose the drums, the drums choose you. Isn't that cool? And when I was just starting, I remember feeling this, this kind of voice, this like the drums choose you. I don't even know. And I ask all my students that are new to this instrument, like why, you know, we all have our favorite drummers and some of us remember something that made us want to play drums, but generally it's like, I don't know why it's the drums. Why not basketball or why not cooking? Like why the drums? I don't know. It's that thing that draws us to what we love. So you took action to be here today. And whether you are completely new to this crazy instrument, like look what I'm in front of, the drums. I got wood in my hands, I'm gonna be hitting the stuff. This is like the most fun and it's, it's a completely crazy journey. Uh, you may be new to it. You may be uh, a, a parent that has someone in your, in your family, maybe a child that you see this call in them and you see they're drawn to it. And you may not know why, but you're, you're wanting to feed and invest in that passion. And you may be a drummer that wants to strengthen your foundation. And I like to think of this as white belt mentality. So think of that as a lifelong pursuit of white belt mentality. And if you think of someone like Steve Smith, fellow ball drummer, he's, he's incredible. He's in, his, he's in his 60s, 60 years young, somewhere in there. And he's like just getting better all the time. And on his YouTube channel, he's posting videos of him practicing and stuff. And, he's, and during the challenges that we faced in the last year, he is getting better. So that's what this lesson is going to be on, this event. And it is an event because you're taking action. You are listening to this call. And we're going to have fun. Yes, it's a challenge. This instrument is massively challenging. And I've been playing this, the drums for over three decades. And I can remember just, man, the, the, the challenges never stops. And even, even today, the challenges just never stop coming at you, but you got to always get back up. There's an ancient proverb that says, get knocked down seven times, get up eight times. And that's what this instrument is, but it's fun. The joy that it brings and the, and the, the reward and the, the fulfillment that this instrument brings is, is unlike anything I've ever seen. And I've been watching this in students for decades and it's just, it's a powerful force. And in today's world, there is outbreaks of anxiety depression, isolation. And this is when, you know, you try to try to take it on all yourself, you, you're isolated and, and it can bring along a lot of uh, feelings of anxiety and fear. And this is really an epidemic in the world right now. And we're going to fix this with drumming because, or at least a part of it, because drumming really makes us, it's, it's an amazing pursuit. It feels good. It's joyful. And it brings us together. We are powerful together and stronger as a community. And there's nothing like the community of drummers. It's fantastic. So let's get into it. We're going to, we're going to do this. So whether you're uh, a parent, you want to inspire your kids, whether you're a brand new drummer and you've always wanted to do this, or you're a drummer that wants to strengthen your foundation, something's going to be here for you. And I'm learning with you. I am, I am a student on this path too. And there's a saying, when you teach, you learn twice. So as I go over these concepts today, I am strengthening, strengthening them myself and really, you know, questioning them and going, yeah, like this really is important. And, and it, every time I explain it or practice it, it gets a little bit stronger. So we're going to get into this today. 
So let's have some fun. So this is on music and movement. Music and movement. Now, I wish I saw this lesson back in the day. This is pre-internet, but when I started, I struggled a lot. So if you're in that beginning spot, I know what you're going through. And it might be a little bit easier now because, you know, we have the magic of YouTube and we're, we're live right now. But I can remember when I started, I had no guides. I didn't know where to turn. There were no, you know, teachers in the place that I, that I grew up. There were some teachers, but sometimes you get stuck in, in the traditional music edu education. And I believe that this takes you down the wrong path a lot of times. So unfortunately, traditional music education, sometimes you just get lost in the books and it's death by exercises and, and it's all about being correct and right and, and you're going through all this and you're like, why am I doing this? And the goal really is to, to sound like you on the drums and to play your favorite music. And sometimes you're not even allowed to play your favorite songs right away. You're just, you're just stuck in exercises and and techniques just for the sake of technique and all that's important so we're going to touch a bit upon that today but i believe it's it's wrong if you can't play your favorite music like right now and when i started i think the 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 best thing that i did was just play along with a lot of albums and i learned a lot of things the hard way but i eventually figured some things out and and I'll get into some of that today, but at the beginning, this is a challenge and you really don't want to be taken down this, this wrong route. You want to be playing music right away. And you don't want to be taken to a, a place that is just leading you to be a mediocre version of the crowd. Like I believe you have something to say on the drums. If you think like your fingerprint, if you can just rub your fingers right now. So your fingerprint is absolutely unique. It's literally one in like billions that can boggle your mind. And so what you say on the drums, we want to bring that out. So every practice session, every lesson should be really bringing out a little bit more of you on the drums. And you have your own music that you want to express. Along with like your favorite drummers, your favorite bands, maybe you want to be in a band and know what it feels like to sit in this seat right here and feel the audience like cheering and the band, you get the look from the bass player, the smile. It's, it's amazing. So this all has to do with music and we should be doing this right from day one. Now, the second thing is movement. And there's something I like to say to my students, how you move is how you groove. So repeat that back right now. How you move is how you groove. So what we don't want is tension and, and tension, as we say, is the enemy. Tension is the enemy. And what is tension, if you think about that for a second? It's basically tightness. So as I said, when I started, I did one thing right. I just put on the headphones and I was just jamming. And I didn't, I didn't know what, what the heck I was doing. Uh, but I was like really squeezing the sticks hard. And I was getting a lot of blisters and I was working a lot harder than I needed to, it turned out. But it was like, I didn't know that at the, at the outset. So I had to really learn this the hard way. And I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't learn a lot of this stuff till I was like, like around 20 or so and, and even past that. So I'm going to share with this with you today. So right away, you can think about how you're moving, which, which equals into your groove and your sound. And as we said, we want a little more of you to come out on the drums and movement is really how we're going to get it. So movement and music. We're going to do that right away. So let's get to it. And as we said, like you don't choose the drums, the drums choose you. So think about how enthusiasm is the fuel and you really want to tap into that. So again, this is where sometimes traditional music's music lessons just has it wrong where they just sometimes kill that enthusiasm. And, and you definitely don't want that. I had this student years ago, his name was Kenny in in the town where I grew up and he was just into, I think he was into like Keith Moon from the who, and he was just into like going crazy around the kit. And, uh, he, he had, he had lessons with me for a while. And then I, I, I moved 
and he and he had to find a new teacher and this teacher meant well and and is you know a re really good drummer himself but he was kind of doing things like the, the traditional way like this is right and this is wrong and and this kind of thing and he meant well and what he did to poor kenny if you can if maybe maybe he's watching this right now is he he gave i think kenny was like 11 or 13 somewhere around there which you, you might be in this age and he gave him a cd if you remember what that was of miles davis kind of blue now miles davis kind of blue is iconic and it's it's one of the best albums i've ever heard and it's fantastic but i can really like when i was 11 and 12 i was into like kiss motley Crue, led zeppelin metallic i had a whole wall on my room that was like plastered with metallic it was my first concert it was amazing the black album but uh and and he was kind of into this and and like if you had gave me a cd of miles davis kind of blue when i was when i was that age like i wouldn't have been been into it and so poor kenny's just he had this teacher like no you must listen to this i want you to go home here's 10 exercises from the book you know play these exercises to this to the cd because it's important and, and you must learn it and this is this is what learning music is and learning drums and and yeah but i'm not yeah yeah but just do it this is what you have to do and you can see i'm oh, i'm losing i'm losing my enthusiasm so enthusiasm is the fuel right so and he ended up quitting lessons from this guy unfortunately and, and that's really sad like you don't want to do that every teacher i think has something to share like if you're ever if you ever think man i could i could i could share that with somebody like do it don't doubt yourself don't, uh, you know, have imposter syndrome, like share this with your friends, share this with anybody who will listen to you. Drums is about community and sharing. So enthusiasm is the fuel. So let's get into a music of movement. By the way, let's talk about a couple things before we go on. I'm on my awesome quiet set here because I have to keep my neighbors happy and by the way, my first acoustic set when I was a kid, my parents, I begged them for like, I think two or three years straight and I had to save up money and all this stuff. Finally got a full blown acoustic kit. The neighbor was not a fan of drums. Let me tell you, she was this little short British lady and she looked you know, a little like a troll, like three, four foot high, if you could imagine it. And we were in like a detached house and she would call the police when I would practice this poor 11 year old me, <laughs> uh, 10, 11, 12 years old, something like that. And, and I'd see like the squad car coming in. So I am keeping the neighbors quiet today. Now I'm actually in, in my practice bunker here and we're just making this happen to you to have this, this, uh, this masterclass, this workshop. But uh, I've got a new studio under construction. We got a lot of gear coming. So next time we do this, we're going to have the full blown kit, all the gear and stuff. So we're just doing our best. And whenever there's challenges like we've all been facing this last year, we just do the best we can. And you don't even need sticks to drum. You know, if you just think drums, tap on drummers are famous for tapping on things and you can play on a pillow and stuff so let me just i'll just give you a little tour of the kit here and if you don't know this is your first lesson you're like what the heck are all these called so quick tour snare drum turn it on love that drum so snare drum uh tom toms I only have two. I'm not like Neil Peart with like a hundred around me, but uh, I like to have lots of toms, but sometimes two is good. And bass drum. So with my foot, hi hat, cymbals, like crash cymbals, ride cymbal. And these are Sabian quiet tone cymbals. And they're actually not that quiet, but. They're beautiful instruments. Like these are legit symbols. So here's my ride. Crash symbols. Hi hat. I'm looking outside my window. 
There's no police here. So if you want a quiet kit, these are the Remo silent stroke heads, by the way. And so this is like a legit drum set. And this is a, a you know legit musical instrument to practice to. But as I said, you're on your pillows. I can remember before I even had a set, I was like building a set in my house out of like stuff and I was like drumming on the cat and uh, no, I wasn't really doing that, but just boxes and stuff like that. So uh, whatever you can do, but this is, this is what it is today. And we're going to have some fun with you and whatever you have, if you have a couple pencils or a couple chopsticks, we're going to have fun. Now we have uh, giveaways today. And I'd like to thank everybody that made this possible, like Long and McQuaid, spreading inspiration, education, inspiration, you know, music to the masses. They're, they're outstanding. And every store I go into, there's a great team. So this is what I love about Long and McQuaid. It's like a team and they really get it. Just the power of music and sharing it. And, it, and it's, it's amazing. So many great people in that organization. Uh, Sabian cymbals, as I said, Remo heads, sonar drums, and Vic Firth sticks. We're going to be giving some of these away. And we got lots of prizes, by the way. So go to the, uh, the chat, I think. And I believe the email is Lesso is amazing, bald drummer at, no, I'm just kidding. It's Lesso at long mcquadecom you'll see that in the uh in the sidebar there if you're live you gotta be live for that and throw me some questions i'm live right now i'm gonna just anytime you have a question throw it out how i shave my head any anything uh you know drums or non that's cool and uh we got lots of cool prizes I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later but yeah just massive attitude of gratitude and we always kind of say that when we drum and I remind myself to practice it, I remind my students like gratitude really is a muscle. So every time you sit at the kit, it's real easy to, oh, I got this thing I got to work on and oh, this is not coming. And, and like just pause for a moment and just be in massive gratitude that we get to do this. We don't have to do this, we get to do this. And there's a lot of places in the world or times in history where maybe this wouldn't have even been possible that we could indulge together in this. So let, let's like celebrate this attitude of gratitude. Maybe it's to your, your beautiful parents like I have or your family or the drums themselves. You know, this used to be a tree and the metal used to be in the ground and stuff. So it's like, you know, thank your drums, <laughs> thank your drumsticks. So uh, hit me with that, hit me with any questions. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, okay, so let's start with movement. Now, sometimes I'm thinking, where should, you know, music and movement, we could start in either place. But when I started, I, I bought uh, the book Stick Control. So if you've ever heard of that book, that's, that's fantastic. And I just read the notes which is the music. And I, I played it along to my favorite albums at the time, which is pretty cool, but I didn't know anything about movement. And it turns out, yeah, it's actually, it's actually kind of important. It's actually really important. <laughs> uh, and George Lawrence Stone, the author, author of that book, he really did this with his students. It was all about how to move and, and your stance and stuff and what the sticks were doing. So we'll get into a little bit of that. And let's, let's pause for a second and think, what is technique? So if you think, what is technique? And sometimes it's like, I never really thought that deeply. Technique is just technique. And it's like, well, let's get deep and really think about it. Because some, you hear this all the time. If you Google how to drum, you know, you get like the latest technique. Oh, he is good. He or she is great technique. And it's like, what really is technique? Now, a technique is simply how you do something the how of what you do like that's it it's it's super simple like that so if you are doing something that gets you to sound like you again that fingerprint and it's getting your sound like you win that's it if you're getting the result you want that's perfect that's the how of what you do there is no right or wrong there's only consequences so there is no right or wrong 
there's only consequences. And that's very, that's very freeing to me. Cause I'm like, oh man, if I want to hold the sticks like this and somehow that works, perfect technique. So it's just the how of what you do. And a lot of drummers, unfortunately, like pursue technique for technique's sake. And it's like, what's, what's the freaking point of that? You want it to, to get you to an end. So, okay. So it's the how of what you do. And I like to start with stance as soon as you sit at the seat, and whether you're in a chair or something, we're going to like, just get your stance, uh, right first. And we'll, we'll kind of start with that and technique as you, as you go through it, like, remember, you can study this stuff for years and get really technical. Like I just had my lesson. Remember, I still take lessons too. And I have fantastic teachers. My mentor and teacher, Don Fandilero, I've known since I was 17. So that's like two and a half decades ish, something like that. Who's counting, but you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing relationship and I'm seeking out, I'm a seeker. I seek out teachers all the time. And I've got uh, a teacher in Germany, his name's Klaus Hessler and the magic of zoom and, you know, live, uh, you know, well, we're on YouTube right now, but we're live, whatever it is, Skype or whatever you can connect. This has never been a greater time in history. You can connect with me. You can connect with your favorite drummers around the world. And I was just on a lesson with him and we're talking about degrees of technique, like where the index finger should be and you're feeling and then different exercises and stuff. So it, it never really ends. And this is a danger when you start of like going too deep into technique. So when I have students and sometimes with myself, I just want to plant a seed and that's what we're going to do today. Just so we get the awareness kind of opens up and there's, there's a concept where it's something like when the mind expands to new levels, it never goes back to its original, the, the way it originally was. So I'm going to make you aware of some new concepts today and probably you'll never maybe see the drums or hold your sticks in, in like the same way again. And that, that's a, that's a very positive thing. It's like, once you're aware of something, you can't be unaware of it, which is, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to hopefully save you a lot of time and, uh, and pain like I had at the beginning and you'll just be aware of stuff. And that's enough when you're starting because I have, you know, I've had a lot of young students and, any age that you start and we just want to plant those right seeds. So the first thing is stance and without going, we only got a little bit of time today, so I won't go into that much, you know, too much detail about it, but generally it's like you want to think from your center and you want your back straight shoulders back and take a deep breath. And you've probably been told your whole life, have good posture, have good posture. I, I definitely was, but like, why? And sometimes I ask students like, why keep your back straight like this? And it's like, well, it's good. Well, why? Well, it's because I was taught. Well, why? And you, and you keep thinking about it. And then I'm like, I'll give you a clue. It's like, oh yeah, breathing. Like oxygen is kind of good for energy. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. So when he said, just get that, get that stance, stay loose in the shoulders. Remember, tension is the enemy, so just do like a quick scan. And the seat is really important, so I'm, I'm just, just feeling very centered and balanced. And let's do, let's do a cool little exercise right now to get us in this state. So there's something called the victory stance, okay? So just literally do this. I can see you all out there around the world. Put your hands up in the air. This is the victory stance so right now like hormones chemically like inside your body good stuff's happening when you do that so now victory so I'm, I'm, i feel like i just scored a touchdown this is awesome <laughs> so let's take three deep breaths now through the nose slowly let it out one more Slowly let it out. One more. Perfect. So that's centered. I don't know about you. I feel calm and centered. I feel like, all right, let's freaking do this, right? So get your stance. A lot of, a lot of people 
I've seen them just rush in, grab sticks, and, and start going, and, and they're worried and, and frustrated, so you don't want to do that. Attitude of gratitude, get your stance together. Excellent. So let's talk about movement. I'll, I'll play so I got some clips here. I'm gonna, gonna play a few clips just to demonstrate some of this stuff. And this would be awesome if it was three or four hours, but we only got a bit of time, so I'll go over this uh, as quick as I can. And if you have any questions, hit me with those. Um, now, one thing to always keep in mind is when you move, you want to stay as loose as you can and just keep focused on on, on the right things because it's really easy to get overwhelmed and we really want to focus on less things. So I call these the two pillars of technique. Let's start with that, the two pillars of technique. Now, what is a pillar? A pillar is like the foundation that holds up a structure, right? So if you think of like the two pillars of technique. So we'll get into this a little bit because now we're sat, now we're in front of this instrument. Okay, so what now? So the first pillar of technique is this thing called the free stroke. Okay, the free stroke. Now we're not gonna get too into terms and, and techniques and stuff. There are some drummers out there that are like, ah, terms and labels, like throw it all away. And, and a part of me kind of likes that a little bit. So it's like, you know what? Do we really need names and labels? Like, because it's, it's, it almost gets like, like too much focused on the names and the labels and it, and it gets too, too much focus on that. It's like, well, what's the essence of it? Like, why are we even doing it? What, what is it behind the name? So we'll focus on that. But however, this is what I'm going to show you right now is the free stroke. But what is the essence of the free stroke rebound? Okay. So if you've got sticks or if you're in front of a pad, and by the way, we're going to be giving away an amazing ProLogix pad today. These are the best pads in the world. They have something called the new method pad. I play it. This is, this is not the method pad, but you will be uh, able to get one of these. So look in the chat right now and enter your email. So let's just think every time the stick is going down, it's going to want to what? It's going to want to come back, right? So I can, if you're in front of a pad or even, even you could do this on a drum or a cymbal, but I'm literally just bouncing the stick like a basketball. So if you play basketball and if you're horrible at basketball like me, but at least you can probably dribble, right? So you can imagine dribbling a basketball and you see like the stick just wants to come up, right? So sometimes with younger students, I'm like, okay, just, just keep your hand loose. So the stick can, you're not, uh, you're not, you know, like the term stick grip is actually not a good term, right? You're gripping something because you're holding on for dear life. So the stick is very loose and it's just bouncing like that, right? So that's basically with my students, like, I'm like, do you, especially younger students, like, do you feel that? And it's like, just look at this. This is the, called the most boring exercise in the world. So I'm just slowly, you can do this to a song even. I'm just slowly tapping the pad and the drum. And I'm just like, do you, you know, ask the question, like, do you feel it? Do you feel that the stick wants to come back? And I'm looking at the image of myself right now. If you have a mirror and you can literally just see like, oh yeah, the stick wants to come up. Now this thing called the free stroke is where we just take it to the next level. And I'm really just bouncing. So if you think of taking a ball and like, I'm gonna really focus throw and just, and, and catching it right as the ball comes, comes at you, right? I have beautiful children, you know, age like, well, at this time it's like four months, three years old and four years old. And they're still, you know, it depends what age my four year old's got it, but like you throw a ball to a baby and, and it's, it's gone. Right. And then maybe two year old they slowly get it. And then, and then you have to train the muscles to kind of go with that ball and go, okay, it's going through space. I have to put my hand there. 
And that's what's happening when you throw a ball and you catch it, right? So it's got to happen with the sticks. Now, what I did was I poor, poor me, younger me, <laughs> with like blisters and stuff. I was squeezing it, pushing and pulling it up. And look at the face I made. It's just, ow, and that kind of hurt, right? I can't believe I lived like that, man. So as I, as I do that, I just want to feel the stick come back. And then next level will be the free stroke. But we're not going to, all we need to do today is just like be aware that the stick wants to come back. Okay, so what's the first pillar of technique? Rebound. And the way we practice it is this thing called the free stroke, but the most important thing is rebound. So that is super, super important to know. So that's the first pillar of technique. So second pillar of technique is something called the molar stroke. Now again, terms, labels, some people like, yeah, I don't even, I wanna name it this. And, <laughs> You could call it, uh, call it the U stroke. You can name it after yourself. And this was named after Sanford Moeller, okay? Over a century ago who, 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 you know, you can get deep into the history. This is fascinating. I, I'm resisting the urge to like tell you a lot about it right now, but we'll get into it another time. But Sanford Moeller, he just basically observed in nature and in the, the teachers he had at the time, like, oh, they're moving in this whipping motion. It's like a circular kind of round wave-like whip that relaxes you and you get, wow, look at all the power they have. And these, at the time, he was learning from old older men, which were ex-military drummers. And these were like, he just noticed these like 90-year-olds would just rock like 20-year-olds <laughs> like on the pad. And so we always say, Work with nature, not against. That's massive. So work with nature, not against. So it was explained to me too. If you think of like a bird's wings flapping. So you, you can, I know I look ridiculous right now. I don't care. You know those dragons in Lord of the Rings? Whoa, just their wings, right? So look at this whipping motion. There's no dragons in the world, but there's birds, right? And they flap their wings like this. Now if you go stiff and you try to flap, you feel how much energy that's burning, right? So the molar stroke, you may have heard of that before. Like if you're Googling like how to drum, well, all this stuff will come up. You're like, what is that? It seems mysterious and like, it's not. It's just this motion here. So it's technically like a whip. And I could go fast and you'll see it'll bounce your pad right off. I could go, I could go uh, kind of slow like that kind of light but the point is just to just to think wavy <laughs> and that's all the seed that we're going to plant today and what is the key takeaway it's momentum so isn't that cool and i had to really think about this because i remember learning the molar stroke because it's it's an important thing to to go over but i was like well wait what, like what's happening what's the science of kind of kind of like what does happen why does it work what's going on and i thought about it researched it watch some like slow motion videos and stuff and ask my teachers and it's like it's really momentum so if you think about momentum it's energy moving efficiently with nothing in the way so as i as i can do this this whip or wave see like every this is a big instrument by the way <laughs> in case you didn't notice like this is the illusion of the practice pad. You know, you may get this amazing ProLogix pad, but you're still just doing this, right? Now, actually, ProLogix does make a kit at a practice pad. So there you're getting a little closer to matching, like, what this instrument really is. Because it's, 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 it's huge, man. This isn't the ukulele, right? This is like a, a huge instrument. So as I play, and I'll play a, a little clip so you can kind of see this. So whatever, I, whatever piece I'm kind of going to, you can see that there. Or if I want a little bit of power and kind of groove, you notice my body's kind of dancing. See 
that. So movement, and it's really those two pillars. So what are they? Repeat after me. Rebound and momentum. Rebound and momentum. And by the way, I know you're getting overloaded today. I'm, I'm, I'm just going crazy at you with, with all kinds of information. If, if you want a free uh, video course on this and a PDF like mini ebook that I've been working on for a long time and it's all the awesome stuff I've learned from decades of boots on the ground and the great teachers I've had I want to share with you. So just go to chrislasso.com and you'll see, you'll get a, a, a free video lesson and a free PDF booklet of music and movement and all the stuff I'm talking about is there encapsulated for you for free. I want to give that to you. Okay, so that's chrislessel.com. It's there for you. We're going to cover all kinds of stuff today. Now, uh, let me play a little clip and then I'll show you another clip of one of my favorite drummers. So uh, watch how I'm kind of moving in this in this uh in this clip and this is just a short clip from my band modus factor okay and this is an album called the picasso zone and it's on brontosaurus records and ian de souza is on bass he's from toronto and brown man is on trumpet also from toronto and these guys are so look them up if you can ever see them doing different projects and what they do like they're they're unbelievable musicians and uh I feel like I'm the worst in the band when I play with them because they kick my butt and they make me, they make me really be the best I can be. So this is a short clip from one of those songs called Brownie in Motion. <laughs> Listen to the entire song if you want to check that out. Uh, that's Brownie in Motion by my band Modus Factor. Well, we've got a lot to cover, so uh, let's get into it. We've got a couple questions, actually. Let me look at that. And one thing I'll, I'll just address first, because there's probably some questions here about it, is I'm playing something called Open Handed. And I'll play a, another clip for you that's going to get deeper into this, but this is really important, especially when you're starting out. If you could just get in that position, that, that kind of stance and feel that. So right here. And I started out playing cross just because I was told to. So it was like, just do this because everybody else does it. And again, sometimes traditional lessons, they mean well, but it's just like, okay, just do this. Be like everybody else, just because it's always been done. And, uh, and that's how I started. And I got into some challenging habits because look, look what I'm doing. It's way over here. And I've got this barrier. And of course, the, the drummers we love, I'm not knocking playing cross. I'm not saying it's wrong. Dave Grohl, John Bonham, Chad Smith, all our favorite drummers. 
99% of them play cross. It's, it's incredible, but is the instrument involved, evolving? Is there a way that can bring out more of you on the drums? And I believe there is. So in my mid twenties, I was inspired to take the plunge and play what's called open handed. And two things came out of it. My weaker side improved and I was, I came up with different ideas. I was a little more create creative because I just had to be. So I challenge people. I used to be nice about this and say, ah, you can try it, do it if you want, there's no rules. Now I say, no, you must have at least, at least, 1% of your playing open handed. Okay, so this will be even if you just do this in the depths of your practice, you know, bunker, and no one ever sees you do it. That's actually how I started. Then that's a victory for you. And that would count as that 1%. But this is like, if you just start now, we're taking a fresh look at this instrument. This is how I, I teach my students check this out. So if we're just starting basic beats. And then, I'm on the right side, same beat. Now at first, you burn a little more calories, because you're like, okay, I've got to do this on the, on the right side. And I also have to do it on the left side. This happens at first. And when I started teaching this way, I was like, man, am I screwing up my students? Like, man, I'm giving them, you know, it's like driving a car in England on the left side or whatever side. And then, and then in like North America, you're on the other side and you just, it's like messing up. But it, we underestimate ourselves and our potential and the, the magic of adapting in the human brain, right? So what happens is it doesn't take long. It's like you get used to both sides really quickly. Now the magic happens of if you want to cross, you can. Because if I can do this, and I can do this, couldn't I just do this? Or couldn't I just do this? Yes, I could. So I've got students it's like fantastic where I've taught them, you know, from day one. <laughs> And then they're like, they want to play cross sometimes. Oh, sorry. So we uh, playing cross because you choose to is fan is fantastic because this is art, this is expression. That should be the reason you play cross, which is like, man, I just like it. Uh, it gets me close to my heroes because they, you know, it makes me feel like closer to the, the grooves that they're playing. That's totally cool. And their technique and bad habits are barely even there. But will it increase your, you know, will it make your weaker, weaker side stronger? Yes, it will. Will it increase your ideas? It will just force you to come up with different ideas. Yes, it will. And then play cross the other 99% of the time. <laughs> But at minimum 1%, and so many of the great players, players in the world, Steve Gadd is one of them. He's like, you know, 10% open-handed. Steve Smith, we were talking about before, he's like 20% open-handed or something. So those two benefits will happen. And then when you go to cross, you'll be like, whoa, I feel really good. Instead of like me, where I was like forced to play cross at first, and I got stuck there. And I was like, why am I even doing this? And 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 uh not good you don't want to go that route so let's go to a couple questions yeah good good call okay so yeah thank you sarah and soundsmith six i want to answer all your questions at once oh man these are awesome wow guys Okay, there are amazing questions here. So um, sometimes I have the technique of giving long answers to less questions. I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna do the opposite right now. I'm gonna go shorter answers for less questions. So we'll get to the community here. So this is awesome. So Sarah, um, 
Yeah, is there any reason why I flipped the stick around? Okay, so remember, what are the two rules of drumming? Number one, there are no rules. Number two, follow rule one, right? This is art. This is amazing. This is this is freedom. That's such a cool thing. So if anybody ever says like correct to you, and this is this is where traditional lessons again, like this is the right way, this is the correct way. Like, no, forget it, get out of there. There is no correct way. There's only like consequences that happen. And holding the sticks like this is fantastic. And it's funny, like I've <laughs> sometimes flip them around and you know, someone that's new goes, why are you holding the sticks wrong? Like, whoa, what are, that's wrong. And we want to, <laughs> I get it at first, it does look like backwards, but we want to, we want to get rid of that. So when you're, uh, yeah, when you hold the sticks backwards, you just get a different feeling on the drums and we'll wait here. It's a different thing. There's actually sticks you can buy where it's two butt ends on each side. Uh, I think they're called bats or something. I can't remember, but I, I played those for a few years. Uh, even when I do this right now, Neil Peart from Rush played for years like this. Um, yeah, and then just when I flip one around, it's it's it signifies to my weaker side to work a little harder. Uh, my teacher and mentor, Don Famulero, I saw do this, and he's really big on like, challenge your weaker side, challenge your weaker side. And it just is a vibe and a feeling and I like it. And sometimes it's, it's, it's a little tribute to like my teacher and it gives me the feeling of inspiration that I had. Uh, it's funny if you watch, if you're a Star Wars fan like me, like Luke later, he had like little tributes to his, to Darth Vader, his father. So, <laughs> so maybe, maybe it's like a tribute to Darth Vader, you know, that kind of thing. But, uh, but I like, yeah, just, it, it's kind of a vibe and, and I do it and I like it and try it yourself and, and see what works. And remember, this is a never ending evolution. You're going to find your own way. Remember, this is all about your voice, like unleash your best self through drumming, your best self through drumming, right? So experiment and find your way. But remember, there's no right or wrong. You can like, uh, you can just try different ways, right? That's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so Soundsmith 6, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting high. Remember, technique, you want to work with nature, not against, right? So, so make that a lifelong study, like my, my beautiful wife, Nancy, she's, she's doing such, such an amazing job teaching our kids through nature, and it's really inspiring me. I'm like, oh, man, why am I, why that's such a good idea, right? Like t bringing kids into the forest and teaching them through magic that's all around us and seeds and stuff it's amazing so that's what we want to do as adults and drummers right like so what i'm getting at here is if your knees are below your hips anywhere in here you're working with nature you're not fighting gravity and if you fight gravity i'm sorry you will you will lose i remember when i was a kid and my mom's like do your zipper up when it was winter time from Canada, right? It's freaking cold here. And I was like, no, I'm going to rebel and not do my zipper up. Not a very smart thing to do when you're like 13, right? And who lost? Me. I froze and was like, oh man, because you will lose against nature every time, right? So you will lose against gravity. What's going to be the cost? Your lower back right here. So if you you don't want to break that angle right there. So it used to, it's less of a trend now, but back in the day, like in the, in the you know, 80s, I guess, 70s and 80s, a lot of drummers sat really low and all their stuff was high. So if you can imagine me sitting low where my knees are, high, knees are higher than my, than, my, uh, than my hips, all the gravity is going to my lower back. And, and you got certain drummers that are like, oh man, I'm 60 years young. 70 years young and, and I'm like, oh, I'm starting to lose my lower back and some people have to get surgery and stuff and we don't want to go that route. The beautiful thing with technique and like working with nature is like, you'll be drumming till you're, you're 110 years young and beyond. And I'm not kidding. Like this is, this is literally the fountain of youth. It's, it's amazing, right? I'm actually 89. I don't know if you, uh, if you knew that. 
I might be kidding about that, but still, it's, it, it's true. So that's why I'm kind of sitting high. Uh, let's see, yeah, influential drummers. I like to, I'll try to answer it in a different way, like always take inspiration from every everywhere and everybody. And really it's like, you don't want to be a clone of your influential drummers. You want to, like when someone inspires you, you're actually seeing a piece of you that wants to come out. Isn't that cool? So I love Stuart Copeland from The Police. I like Carter Beaufort from Dave Matthews Band. I love Tony Williams. I like Miles Davis and he did a ton of his own stuff. I love John Bonham from Led Zeppelin. I love Lars Ulrich from Metallica. Now all those five players, like I can see a piece of me in them. And I didn't know that at first. It's like, oh, they're awesome. I love them. But it's like, actually, what you, you know, you like specific things about each of your players. And that's a part of you. Isn't that cool? So if you blend them all and you work on that, you, your voice will come out over time. But so you don't want to be like all about just one or two drummers, really get it, get it from everywhere. So I see, you know, you guys and my younger students and could be any age really. And I learned something from everybody. I did uh, uh, a senior's drum circle for them. And they're, they're you know, getting drums for the first time. Some of them are like in wheelchairs and stuff. And you get that feeling of drumming in community. And like, they're, they're teaching me a thing or two, right? It's, it's really, really deep and really cool. So you can learn from everybody. Okay, so let's, uh, yeah, good, good question here. So Spike is asking, uh, should I su suggest a practice pad? Yes, absolutely. So practice pad is like the laboratory. You could think of it like a boxer, uh, the sparring, you know, the sparring pads or the punching bags. Was it think the speed bag, right? You're working on the, getting the reps, getting the reps, reinforcing good technique. Uh, now you mentioned the rudiments. This is where, this is what I teach is like movement. So let's say a paradiddle. I don't know if you know a paradiddle, but that goes right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Paradiddle, paradiddle. So you try that. Paradiddle. Excellent, I can see you all out there. So that's a rudiment, but and you could practice that all day on a pad, but it's like how you move is what's gonna be important. When I was, again, when I was a kid, I just kind of squeezed the sticks, read it in a book, and I just kept practicing. I'm like, yeah, I'm getting a better drummer. I'm becoming a better drummer. And I did so many things wrong. I was ignoring my stance, ignoring you know, how, the, how the feet were, ignoring the musicality of it. Now when I play a pair, it'll remember the two pillars of technique, rebound, and momentum. So now, is this the only play to, way to play a paradiddle? No, but it's a good way. You see how, so it's how you play the rudiment that's massively important. Now when I move around the kit, So even if I'm speeding it up, so you see, um, the sticks are definitely bouncing and I'm kind of using that wave in there. Now, when I started, I didn't do either of those things, so it didn't sound very good, because remember, how you move is how you groove. And let me show you something cool here. So this was an awesome trick I actually learned from my teacher. Watch some of your favorite drummers in, with the sound muted, okay? And, and you'll kind of see what I mean about how they're moving. And you'll see like where the, the uh, yeah, like how their sound comes from their movement. The breathing and, and you know, we were talking about before. So I'm gonna share my screen here. And if, if anybody's just joining in, they're gonna be weirded out because I'm gonna play you a clip where 
the sound is muted and I've slow motioned it. So YouTube has this <clears throat> really cool feature where you can slow down the, the, uh, you know, the, the video. So this is Chad Smith from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Slow down and muted. I'll bet you've never seen the Chili Peppers like this. So if you're just tuning in, you're gonna be you're gonna think your video's broken. You're just gonna be like, what the heck? Uh, what the heck lesson is this? Where's my sound? What's wrong with my speakers? So check it out. So look how loose he is in the shoulders. And he's got kind of a bounce. Oh, he's got kind of a bounce. Yeah, and he's got a look at his face. He's like, whoa, he's having fun. Now, his knees are a little bit, abo bit above his hips, so I hope that he's okay with his lower back. And you can see there's that throw. The six, look how loose he is. So loose, the six are just kind of float. Look at that. Ah, and then that little throw of the shoulder there. So that's pretty cool. So that's one of my one of my favorite things to do, and it's so it's so counterintuitive because you're like watching your favorite drummers with the sound muted and slow it down if you can, and you can kind of see how they're moving there. So we are running out of time. You guys are going to get your giveaway soon. Throw any more questions into the chat. Uh, let's see. I want to hit as many things as I can here today. So um, let's get a bit into music just before we run out of time. Cool. So that pretty much covers movement. Uh, you know, we're, we're really talking about not hitting our drums. So I like to think like if you high five somebody, you're not hitting them, right? You're not like, ugh, ugh. And it's more like, wow, I, oh, look at this, you know, the team score. And it's big and it's boisterous, but it kind of, Kind of bounces off right and, and hitting would be like you're driving a nail in with a hammer into a wall and i remember my teacher always telling me that like like don't hammer nails don't hammer nails <laughs> so sometimes you see poor drum heads with like craters and poor cymbals that are cracked and sticks that break and it's like i know that's so counterintuitive but like don't hit the drum so that clip of chad that we just saw is very <laughs> Floating. Every, everything is floating and again those those two pillars are in action just like the way you'd high five somebody like if you're around someone right now high five them and, and feel how good that feels right that's fantastic so music let's just i guess we'll quickly we need another hour to cover music but we'll uh we'll get into that any questions you guys let me know oh fernando amazing question so what's the first groove to learn that's what we're, you've been waiting fernando now is the answer to that question <laughs> so i like to call these the go round grooves okay, the go round grooves and this really came from i remember i was in 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 an airport in toronto and i was flying to germany and i heard the same song in in, uh, Tor in the Toronto airport. And then when we landed like seven hours later, thereabouts was seven, eight hours later, the same song was playing. I was like, wow. And, and I was thinking about the beats, like these are the beats that are like global and, and it's these same grooves you're gonna hear in like hundreds and hundreds of songs. Are they the only beats you can play? Of course not, rhythm is infinite. And you may not even be a fan of these beats, but they literally make the world go round. So if you think of like Michael Jackson, Queen, The Beatles, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, 21 Pilots, like these incredible bands that, that are global, like any corner of the earth is going to be rocking to this music, like I just felt in that airport. These are kind of the same pattern. So it's basically four. And I want you to sing them right now. And this is where, like, when it's death by exercises, and you're kind of getting hit by books, and oh, I have to memorize like 72 patterns. I think that's all wrong. It's like, why not just get really good at 
four, and then you can mix and match those four, add variations, all kinds of stuff, and just have infinite control with those four. So I want you to sing them right now, and then I'll play them to a song, and then we'll get you your giveaways. And you survived your first lesson. This is so cool. So sing them after me. So the first one, doom, ta, doom, ta, doom, ta, doom, ta. And we can, we can add the hi-hat later. And if you know the song like Billie Jean by Michael Jackson, so. So the way you sing it, singing is so important is going to be the way it comes out. We can count and we can go into the books and we can learn to read. All that stuff can come later. But right now, it's your first lesson. Just sing, sing the groove. That's it. So doom, ta, doom, ta, doom, ta. Slow, doom, ta, doom, ta. Notice the ta is kind of on top. It makes it sound cool. So second one, doom, ga, doom, ga. Now why ga? Yeah, you heard it right. Ga is bass drum and snare together. So if you know the song by Queen, da -da -da. Another one. Da -da -da. Da -da. that's called four on the floor. Heartbeat. I know you're moving right now. I know you're moving. And by the way, drummer's best friend is the bass player. And later that hi-hat's going to come in. We'll teach you that. We'll get you there. Yeah, drumming, you know, coordination <laughs> but at first just like brain tattoo that sound doom ga doom ga and then later i have to come throwing the right symbol it's all good rome wasn't built in a day don't worry this is like this is rome here this is a lot lots going on uh third one doom ta doom doom ta doom ta doom doom ta notice that little phrase there Last one, the phrase kind of goes backwards. Doom, da, doom, doom, ta, doom, da, doom, doom, ta. We'll go a little slower. Now, eventually, You'll add all these little, little details that makes it come alive and makes it you. But you can't do that without having that core rhythm in your heart and soul. And that's like doom, da, well, whatever one of the four. So watch this video again. And remember, this is all in the guide in the book I have for you. So we'll get to that. And really just want to repeat them all the time. And you'll start to notice them in your songs. And once you have that awareness, like they'll start coming. Everywhere. It's really, really cool. And then you can mix and match them just like Legos. When you hold Legos in your hand, it's the same Legos, but you're like, oh, I could do this. And you're using your creativity and your imagination. That's the key. Instead of like, I'm going to play pattern 19 to, and, to, and you're just like a robot. No, you're not a robot. You, you have something to say on the drums, right? So we're talking about chili peppers. I'm going to jam with Flea right now. Check this out. This is, we'll see if you know what song it is. And I'm just going to play the four groups. So group three. Notice I can sing it too.
gym with Lee. <laughs> so I started to mix them up a little bit, like on the chorus, doom doom ta, doom ta, doom doom ta, doom ta. So that's a that's just a variation of my core three, pretty much or core four, it's pretty much like groove three, doom ta, doom doom ta. Which is you'll learn over time by being so good at those four, like, oh, I could take that doom doom, move it, flip it around, oh cool. Listen to the song at the same time. And that's a song called Danny California, Flea, just a track of Flea playing the bass to it. And these are called the go-round grooves. So I want to uh thank ProLogix Pads, Sonar Drums, Sabian Cymbals and Vic Firth Sticks for making this possible. Like, remember, have the attitude of gratitude. Who in your life made this possible for you? So you might look up, thank you, mom and dad. Maybe, you're th maybe you thank yourself for taking action because I've seen, you know, doesn't matter what age you're at, if you have this voice inside you, like I've had some people, sometimes 50s, 60s, 70s, doesn't matter, even 80s. And you're like, you know what? I'm doing this now, I'm taking action. So now is always the time to act. Don't get to the end of your life and meet your future self and know that you didn't take action. So you are here with me right now. Thank yourself for taking action. Action is the lifeblood of everything on this instrument. It's a challenge, but we're gonna have fun. So music and movement. And I want you to, enter the i think the email yeah so look at it in the sidebar i think it's lesso at long dash mcquaid and you can enter some of these great uh you can get some of these giveaways what do we got we got vic Firth stick bag all kinds of vic Firth stuff remo t-shirts uh we got heads we got like a hi-hat clutch all kinds of cool stuff so enter that you will get something and go to chrislessel.com and I want to give you uh, a free ebook and a video course with, we go deeper into these concepts. I got as much in as we could in the hour. I didn't even touch a lot of the stuff I wanted to get into actually. Uh, I got more clips to play for you. This is like, we'll go deeper next time and we'll do lots of these. And thank you to Long and McQuaid for sponsoring this. They're such a great team. Show the love. So remember that you don't want to get to the end of your life and have the regret of not taking action. You don't want to go through, you know, these, if, if you're going through some kind of traditional lessons and they're just making you feel uninspired or like you know, just one of the crowd and they're not really bringing out your fingerprint and your voice, don't have that. We don't want that. And you don't want to be isolated on this journey. That's, that's not right. You want to, you want to connect with a community that's gonna empower you and really bring you up. Drumming is a community, music is a community. Don't lone wolf it. This is this can happen sometimes if you're on YouTube, online lessons, and it's like, sometimes you're just watching all these videos and like, man, like I need to actually connect with people in a community to make me feel like I'm getting somewhere. So, so YouTube and watching videos is fine, but make sure you're live with somebody to connect and connecting with the community. Don't try to do it yourself. And whether you're just starting out or whether you're strengthening your foundation or you're a young drummer, you're a parent wanting to inspire your kid, uh, thanks for joining me today. Remember, music and movement is really the beginning of the journey. Movement, how you move is how you groove. And music, express the music that is in within you. Unleash your best self through drumming. So my name is Chris Lesso. I'll see you soon. Go to chrislesso.com, connect with me, and just keep bringing out your voice on the drums and have fun on the path. I'll see you soon.